hello there and welcome to episode number 52 of The Evidence. This is your buddy Dave and we have just relocated to our summer studios way northeast in Bar Harbor, Maine. Oh man, is it nice up here. But we do have a few little bugs and things to tweak on the equipment, but uh, we're going to get it taken care of. Meanwhile, we're going to uh, be looking at some really cool stuff today that my friends Jim West and Laszlo Shabalix. I finally pronounced your name right, Laszlo. How about that? Shabalix. And, uh, and of course, Terry Burnett. And of course, we're going to look at a good old good one from the archives. So, uh, golly, I want to remind you that everything you need to know is right down there in the description. Okay? Everything, if you need to contact me, if you need to learn X3D, and by the way, this is an X3D channel. If you're seeing two pictures, you're not viewing it in X3D. That's why there are two pictures. It's real easy to learn. Take a couple of minutes. If you got questions, drop me a note. I'll do what I can to help you. Okay, Dave, enough talk. Let's start looking at them. By the way, if you haven't checked out Neville Thompson's beautiful images, on the new Giga Macro site, you need to carve out some time to do so. I like it a lot better than the Gigaband site. It's easier to use and finds are clearly marked on the image. Anyway, this is a nice clean find by my friend Jim West. Kind of reminds me of an A-frame house. This looks manufactured to me, what with the angles, the parallel planes, the ridges, and so forth. It is possible that it might be a natural rock, but there's something so clean and purposeful about it that it's hard for me to think that it's just a product of wind and sand. What about that crack on the lower right side? That looks more like a saw cut to me. See how even it is and how there aren't pieces missing from the edges? If you're on Facebook, you'll want to head on over to Jim's page, Martian Apocalypse, and catch up with his research. You want to find anomalies? This image from 796 is loaded with anomalous debris. And how about this old crummy NASA JPEG that our tax dollars are paying for. I've done my best to clean it up and lighten it a bit, but if you click on the link you'll see what I'm talking about. The original looks like mud. Anyway, that round piece down in the right hand corner is what we're after today. This kind of reminds me of a large flywheel, you know those like we found on, uh, you know, those old steam tractors. I have to say that the culture that was obliterated on Mars reminds me of an advanced steampunk civilization. Many of the mechanical remains we find are reminiscent of our own industrial age equipment. I just get the feeling from the existing evidence that Mars continued with that steam era technology for a long time, instead of jumping into the age of fossil fuels and electricity. That's just conjecture and it, it doesn't really mean anything, but just look around. I know it's blurry thanks to NASA's low res JPEGs, but you can still see larger details like the wheel's rim. It has an even thickness, a constant curve, what might be a spoke or two, and of course, all those other strange items clustered around it. The high res on this one must be amazing, which is probably why we only get the low res. By the way, the colors you see have not been added, but are part of the data in the image. Whether that's an artifact of NASA's imaging process or they actually reflect the real-time colors on the surface is up for grabs. During the post-processing, I simply work with the data that's present. 
My friend, Terry Burnett, is a prolific researcher who has found any number of amazing anomalies. Today's example is down there in the left-hand corner, almost off of the page. Even in this context view, you can see that there's something strange about this box, whatever it is. I called this one Terry's Mechanical Marvel for obvious reasons. We're looking at a cube filled with tubing and strange devices, to say nothing of that nice rim around the midsection. Let's get in tight and blurry for a good look. No need to do an inventory on this one. Anyone looking at this and insisting it's just an eroded rock really needs some quality time with an optometrist. Do yourself a favor and check out Terry's Facebook page, Mars X-Files. In a recent episode, we had a look at a beautiful column found by my friend Laszlo Shabalix. We'll have a look at that in a minute, but the fact is we found lots of structural elements broken up and scattered around the surface of Mars. The one we're looking at today is right there in the center. Isn't that beautiful? And look at that clean slice on the right. You want to tell me how that happens naturally? I'm not saying it can't, but to my eyes, it shouts intelligent agency. Anyway, this looks like what is called a chapiter. If you'll allow me a poindexter moment, in architecture, the chapiter forms the topmost member of a column. It mediates between the column and the load thrusting down upon it, broadening the area of the column's supporting surface. <laughs> wow, stuff like that really makes me feel like a man. Now, let's switch back and forth a couple of times between this one and Laszlo's column, just for comparison. Now, let's do an eye training inventory moving from right to left. Notice that it presents a round shape that is perfectly flat. This is typical of a column section. Note also that it has fluted edges around the perimeter. Again, exactly as is found in earthly counterparts. Next is a ring carved with spheres, damaged and eroded, but still recognizable. Another thicker layer follows, which also appears to have carvings and damage, and then at the top, a thin double layer of tiny carved spheres. Notice also, at the bottom left, something is projecting from the column that looks like a pipe or a spigot. Researchers have repeatedly found Earth analogs on Mars. Does this mean that we came from there? Or does it mean Earthlings colonized Mars in the distant past, bringing the arts and sciences of their home planet with them? <laughs> what a can of worms that opens! Well, that's a wrap for this episode. I sure appreciate you stopping by. And, you know, if you saw anything that you like, please consider giving me a thumbs up. That's the only pay I get and the only thing I have to know to go forward with this crazy business. In any case, this is your old buddy Dave over at Mars X3D. Be well. <laughs>